to share with you. Uh, we have we have worked uh, over the course of time to to uh, enhance the transparency and the accountability and the and the public access to information uh, around the town's finances. I'm just going to walk you into first my departmental area, and so if we just go from the home page into departments and into corporate and financial services, you'll see this great mugshot that I'm not proud of at the moment because it's got my mouth open. Uh, so there's a little video that uh, you've all seen before. <laughs> I'll just quickly scroll past that. But you can see that uh, there's a, there's a dis distinction about uh, uh, how, how we're organized. But then there's related links here. And so there's uh, information to the budgets. Uh, the 15 budget is uh, a separate page. I'll take you there. Um, we've got to fix that link. The financial statements and reporting, all of the uh, historic financial statements are, are listed here. And uh, any, any member of the public can see these going back uh, 10, or, 10 or 11 years. Uh, so the 14 audited financial statements are all there. We uh, come back to uh, cash and investment portfolio management, talks about uh, how we do our business. It has uh, information uh, in there as well, just uh, waiting for this to open. Um, and you can see that uh, we're currently doing business with those folks and our investment policy is posted there. And uh, it also says that if you're uh, uh, um, broke, the last sentence of the first paragraph, brokers with major investment brokerage houses are welcome to join our competitive email bidders list on a trial basis. Please contact us for details. So we're always open to hear from other people that are, think that they can offer us better products with greater returns. Uh, development charges talks about that and our background studies and so on and our current rates. Um, uh, fees and service charges, performance measure report cards are all there, so your MPMP reports are listed here. Going back, we we haven't got our 2012 there. I'm just doing this on the fly, obviously. So we've got to do some catch up on those. But uh, most importantly, further down, and there's information here on property tax and water and sewer billing for members of the public, uh, how their tax bills are calculated, what the rates are, and how, how to pay, uh, what the penalties and fees are if you don't, and, and uh, how to reach us for more information. The piece in between here is the reserve funds. And we were talking about this earlier. And so this just describes what a sort of a, a brief narrative overview of the different types of reserves, uh, reserves for existing infrastructure, reserves for new development charges, and special purpose. And then it goes at the very bottom here is this link to reserve funds. And this is the schedule that uh, you have in front of you uh, today. And so, for example, we take a look at the roads R&R &R and we scroll over here and this becomes a link. And this jumps to the reserve fund bylaw and the schedule and it tells you exactly what this is for. And so this is, it's, uh, it holds property tax sourced contributions for the purpose of funding major repairs, restorations, upgrades or replacement of the town's road network and related infrastructure. This would include roads, surf, road surfaces, road beds, bridges, curb and gutter, boulevards, sidewalks, bikeways, street lighting, traffic signals, and so on. And so it just goes right through, tells us what the target balance is, two times the average annual spend as outlined in our 10-year plan. And at any time, council can direct that uh, all or some of these balances could be transferred to other reserves because there is that flexibility with this. Some reserves do not have that flexibility, it's very clear. So that uh, is where our reserve fund information is. It's very easy to see. All of these uh, down the middle here are links to the bylaws. And for uh, particular information, there, there's our DCs. It's all in one bylaw. The, um, the distinction down here is the two hydro reserves are in standalone bylaws. And so the voting rule and the 30-day notice, uh, public notice rules, these are all set out in here as well. And so when you uh, open this up, it'll uh, jump right to the actual bylaw. And you can read, uh, members of the public can see exactly what's in here. 
that the earned interest works in there, what you can spend the money on, what you can't spend the money on. And uh, then there's the voting rule is number seven. And so that's the information that's available on our website for reserves. If I just take a quick sec, I'm just going to jump back out here and go to the 2015 budget page because that's quite topical right now. And uh, it will show members of the public right at the top here. Um, uh, oh, nope. I'm going to go back all the way out to the front page. Yeah, I, I want to go to the 16 budget, sorry. So we go into Town Hall, and there's a budget page over here. And this opens up 2016's budget. And so there's a little information on the citizen budget and a link to jump into it. So members of the public can go there to participate in the citizen budget survey. And then here's the 2016 material, and we continue to update this whole page uh, regularly every week as new materials are put on the table for, for committee. So we've got the capital budget kickoff, the asset management plan, tenure plan, all of these documents that we're looking at today are here. Previously, the review of the financial health document is here. And down at the very bottom, related information, um, uh, there's the video of how your property taxes are spent the, and the links to the 15 and the 14 budgets. And we are just asking our webmaster now to put a link right in here to the reserve fund information. And so uh, we're, ho we're hoping that uh, this, together with what's in our uh, departmental uh, section of the web provides good transparency and ready access to the financial information for the general public that is helpful. I had Councillor Gartner first and Councillor Abel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Elliott. It looks very good. Appreciate you going through that. Um, so the question that I had was with respect to furniture and fixtures, and you said that would be under facilities, and that there would be a heading under that of furniture and fixtures? There's, there's no heading in it, but f furniture and fixtures would be included in it. Would I be able to see that from the uh, Yeah, if we just pop Thanks. back into my department. Thank you. Scroll down to the bottom, um, reserve funds. Scroll down to the bottom to the actual schedule. And this is the document you've got in front of you. And I said it's in facilities. And so if we open up R&R 3. Um, Lovely. <laughs> Your, your, can, your Cantonese needs to uh, come that, into play That's here. the first budget document I've seen that actually makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh, try that one again here. Uh-oh. Making a liar out of me. <clears throat> we'll double check this one. But uh, that's where you would find it, and in that document it would say that that it uh, covers off buildings, elements of buildings, uh, as well as furniture and fixtures. Thank yeah, I think you, we can take this offline. Councillor Abel and Councillor Humphreys. Uh, thank you. The demonstration there just showed my, my question. I just wanted to know how to get to the R&R &R show. You just went right down and did it. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And just in terms of developing this information, I just wanted to thank staff for doing this. And is this, you know, just in terms of, of your role in it and your staff's role, did you did you build this view and provide it to our development team for on the web, or just curious of the process because it's it's really good. We we collaborate with the uh, communications group and uh, with their assistance, we make uh, you know they they help translate the account knees to English. Uh, sometimes we're guilty of that, and uh, it's. Um, that the presentation, whatever's possible, is there. And I, I wanted to make sure that the reserve fund links were all there so that uh, the details, if you really want them, are there. 
but they're hidden, they're sort of behind the scenes because that's not necessarily the key information. I know I'm constantly looking at other municipalities, reserves and reserve funds and trying to see what they're up to. I've got mine completely disclosed. Yeah, no, you know what, thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor, I think it's, it's fantastic. And this is more of, from a communications perspective, how the department leaders can articulate what they want to showcase the residents of what we're doing. And so for me, the communication, the content is all up to the leadership. I, I'm really thankful for this and appreciate continuing to develop that because I, I really believe this is, uh, this is what it's all about, being open and sharing and people can find the information. Maybe not as, as easy as we wish, but it'll get better and better as we get at it. But thank you so much. It's good work. Correct. Thank you. And uh, just as a note, I'm using uh, Google Chrome as my viewer right now. And through Internet Explorer, that uh, particular link does work. And so Jason can see it. I can't. So we'll sort that one out. Councillor Thompson, Councillor Marrakis. Uh, just briefly, um, I know that uh, the mobile platform is structured a little bit differently. So, you know, I heard you say you're working with a web developer with a few different pieces. So perhaps, uh, you know, it's not as simple to find it through the, the mobile app only because, you know, it's not always uh, it's where you hover over something and you see all the links. So perhaps some thought just to a quick link since uh, the budget is topical so that it's a little bit easier to navigate the uh, through your phone. Councilor Marcus. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just quickly, uh, I was at the library and um, I just wanted to do some research and look at some budgets and I found that uh, I could only find last terms in 2005 and I was just wondering, is it not common practice that those approved budget binders are, should be in the library? Because uh, we, they looked everywhere, they, they're not archived, they, they can't find them, so I'm just... I'm sorry, physically in the town library? Yeah, I thought there was a copy every year supplied, and I'm just wondering if, if there's a reason why they, yeah. they just happened to disappear. Maybe do we, do we take them back after a certain period of time? Or Mr. Elliott, do you happen to know off the top? Once we distribute to the library a, a hard copy of the approved budget, we don't take them back. Um, so it's up to the library's retention policies. I'm not sure what they're, what they're doing. Um, in, in our archives, we keep uh, the budgets for, I believe, only seven years. But uh, I do know that we have them, uh, our binders going back 10 years, but they're in various states of um, completeness. Pages get uh, snitched out of them, pages get borrowed for a copy and not put back and that kind of stuff. But uh, we do have a hard copy uh, going back 10 years. So I guess that's, I'll save that to ask when the library comes before us. Thank you. Or maybe one of your representative counselors can take that back to the library itself. Thank you. All right, we finished. Mr. Simonovskis, we had two items. I don't know if you managed to get any information on either of those two. One was uh, the tennis club, number of windows, and the other was on the, the uh, cameras. Yes, uh, to you, Mr. Mayor. So with the tennis club, the staff are identifying 11 windows. Um, that's the number that, that uh, our supervisor believes is there. And with regards to the video cameras, we're looking at up to 10 cameras along with a network video recorder and some additional cabling. So that's more or less the scope of work. So that was 10 cameras and 11 windows? Yes. Okay, okay can I ask uh, if we can go back to 11 dash, I'm sorry, um, 11 8, which is the windows for the, for the tennis clubhouse. Councilor Marakis, Councilor Abel. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, through you to Mr. Simonaskis. Uh, is there any signs of water damage right now coming through, like any signs of mold starting to appear? Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, th there is in the photos, if you look on page 9 and uh, 10, 10 in particular, you can see the, uh, the rot of the wood frame for that particular window. Okay. Thank you. And just as a follow-up through you, have we ever done any maintenance on these windows? Because I know it's common practice that, especially with the wood frame windows, that if you, on a, a, a maybe every two years, if you clean them up, recock them, repaint them, that they last a really long time. So I'm wondering, have we ever done any maintenance on these? Through you, Mr. Mayor, I, I'm not certain. I, I doubt it, um, based on looking at the condition okay. of the windows. <laughs> but I don't know if we have, uh, if we have in the past. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Abel. 
Um, Mr. Mayor, I would move that we approve Project A. Uh, I've got Councillor Gartner who uh, wished to speak. Just a quick question, and I should know this. Do, is that building belong to the town of Aurora? Mr. Downey? Through Mr. Mayor, yes, it does. Uh, the bottom floor is used by the tennis club, and the upper floor is used by the lawn bowling club. Okay. Councillor? Thank you. Councillor Abel, you're moving A, seconded by Councillor Maracas. Any further comments or questions? Councillor, all in favor? Or comment? All in favor? Contrary? It's carried. Thank you. And, and then moving up to 11-12, um, just the cameras. I'm sorry? Okay, Councillor Thompson's moving A. Second, <coughs> Councillor Abel. Uh, comments or questions then on this? Councillor Gartner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, to Mr. Simonovskis, uh, the, uh, with respect to the family leisure complex, you said that there were some, I believe, some cameras that were going to be installed that you had the money for. Does that include the camera for the track? Through Mr. Mayor, I'm not certain if there's, I know there's gaps, and I know staff have identified uh, pro a project to complete gaps, and that may be one of the errors. I can fault the staff and confirm <coughs> that for you. Councilor. Thank you. I think that was identified in the list when the residents came forward because it's very isolated up there and you don't have to check in because it's free. Um, the other um, concern I have, and you didn't mention it, is um, the west side of the leisure complex where you have relatively flat parking. Uh, I used to park there at night, but I don't because it's very isolated when I come out. Is there going to be a camera on that west side? I see, Mr. Mayor. I believe there is a camera now on the north corner looking right down that line. Good. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. Uh, through you to Mr. Simonowskis, you know, I know that, uh, you know, it's fairly competitive out there when it comes to this sort of service, um, but the amount falls below some of our thresholds with regards to procurement. Will we still go out though and, and seek three competitive bids, not necessarily an RFP process, but just to ensure that we are getting a, a good value for it or how do you see us procuring these? Mr. Simonovskis? A three, Mr. Mayor, we have a, a, um, a system in place now, so we're probably gonna be using the same vendor that we've used for, this, for the system and I don't know specifically what the components are. Uh, I can tell you though, if, it's, if we can go out for tender, we will. Uh, if there's integration requirements with our security system, we'll use the security uh, vendor's products. So there's, there's really the question of whether it fits our standard or not. Councillor? I think what I was getting at is I know that, uh, I think it's 30,000 is the threshold. Or what you typically though will seek three quotes. Um, just to get a sense of whether or not the costs associated with it are, are you know, competitive with what's out in the marketplace. So uh, I think that's what I was sort of That is expecting. correct, yeah. Councillor Gartner. Thank you. And Ilmar, following on Councillor Thompson's comment, when we have a project that's um, going out over five years, do we tender that contract all at once and then that would take it over the threshold or do you do it year by year? Through you, Mr. Mayor, this, this project, the, the CCTV work will be done um, one year at a time because each facility will be identified and scoped out and tendered at, at each year. So next year when we come back to council for the 2017 program, okay. it'll be a new project and so Thank you. Um, comments or questions? I think uh, Councillor Thompson moved A, I believe. All in favor? Contrary, that is carried, thank you. Okay, that finishes uh, facilities. We'll move to fleet based on previous discussions from years. I said yes, we just go to item D on all of them and move on. That was a little humor, yeah. councillors. <laughs> Well, Mr. at least at least Mr. Simonovsk has got it too. Jeez. Again, Mr. <laughs> Chair, <laughs> Mr. Chair, if I could uh, just uh, refresh again, when we uh, go through the asset management plan document, in there you will see the process that the fleet manager uses 
to assess each asset there's a scoring system uh, that has been done on all of these items and these are the uh, items being recommended by the fleet manager as the best use of the town's resources uh, at this time to maintain the service level of our fleet and the same comments apply all the way through in each of the various sections thank you mr. Elliott <clears throat> do we wish to pull them all no okay is there specifics that we wish to pull in terms of the fleet we have uh, five items here, 29, 32, 36, 41, 45. On, on all of them? Yeah. Second, Council Maracas, item A on all items, on all fleet items, pardon me. Comments or questions on any of them? Councilor Thompson. You know, I just want to, uh, you know, as Mr. Elliott said, you know, you know, um, I know that uh, a number of years back, there was challenges for, for us around the table, myself included, in, in you know, assessing the value and the process of replacing them. You know, and over those years, staff continued to come back with better and better reports to help us identify the need and the rationale behind it. And so just to echo some of the comments, I, I really appreciate this time around, again, uh, the thoroughness and the background information that's provided to you know, justify the need for replacing it. And so I'm, I'm comfortable with moving forward with all five. Thank you. Other comments or questions on this? Calling the vote, then all in favor. Contrary, that is carried. <laughs> Moving on to roads in, which starts at uh, page 47. <clears throat> number of items in here are there specific items that you would like pulled council on the roads so we have old Bloomington Haida Kennedy Catherine yeah. I'm sorry 1165 councillor okay streetlight poles anything else Okay, just, I'm sorry, just generally? Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll just go with your general question then right now, Councillor Abel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I appreciate, you know, all through last term, this is the sixth year where we're taking off piecemeal and, and working on roads, and I think it's the way to approach it. Um, but I wanted to ask you, Mr. Mayor, the Regency Park area that we, we commonly know, there are still streets there that have culverts and I would have thought we would have had one or two of them on this list this year Mr. Simonakis Johnson Holman those streets there's still a few there three Mr. Mayor they're in the tenure plan what I'd like to do maybe if it would help the councillors if I can just take a look at the tenure plan and come back with some information later in the meeting uh, specifically what we're looking at is when we do our projects we're looking at the condition of the roads and we're trying to you know obviously identify the most the most in need um, if there are if there is a desire to adjust the program we're happy to look at that we, we've done that in the past um, I am I'm not sure which road specifically you're looking at but I can look at those and see how they rate and we can have a conversation about that if that's if that's helpful yeah I, I just thought we would want to get to a stage where everyone has curb and, and uh, drain stores rather than culverts uh, I thought I thought that would be a good way for us to go and we're already remediating remediating other roads that do have that so that's that's the nature of my my question is why and I appreciate you do have a 10-year plan but I would like to be able to offer an explanation to those residents in those areas Yes, Cer certainly three may, uh, I may offer an explanation is basically based on the condition of the roads. so we have we do have uh, urbanized or curb curbed roads that are older and worse condition than some of those uh, rural cross sections which have been repaired so it's a matter of assessing where the best the next best dollar is spent so that's how that decision is made so at this point we have um, just one item that's pulled uh, 11-65 so then would someone put a motion on the floor for the item other items to proceed councillor Abel thank you second 
Councillor Thompson. All in favor then. Contrary, it's carried. Councillor Thompson. Thank you. And just, I just want to uh, ask Mr. Simonovsky a question. So through you to Mr. Simonovsky. It uh, references the fact that the need for this is the damage that occurred to those poles in a summer storm. But just to confirm, that storm happened many years ago. Uh, I do remember um, essentially, you know, seven or eight of them that uh, were, were snapped practically in half and lay strewn about Bayview. So um, can you, in your memory, what was the year? Certainly through Mr. Mayor, uh, it's referenced as 2009 storm. So I guess that's six years ago now. And so I guess, can you provide some explanation as why it's taken this long to be before us? Of course I can through you, Mr. Mayor. This has been a, this actually, and there's two situations. There's, a, there's Bayview as well as Wellington, where there were some pole changes done by Hydro One. Uh, the challenge we have is the spacing with, with all the utilities on these poles. And we've been working with PowerStream and Hydro One to give us the space to put our lights. And the reason why those poles are still there and cut off is because our lights are on those poles. And we're not able to actually move our lights to the new poles until we get approval from all the users of that utility. So. It's been a very frustrating process and very, uh, very slow to get that process complete. So we're actually, we're finally here, so. Thanks, and I think it's good to clarify that it wasn't on our end that the, uh, the delays were, were being imposed, so. You mean other, other agencies are slower than we are? It's good to know. Any other comments or questions on this, please? Right. Councilor Gardner. To Mr. Mayor, to Mr. Simonovskis, why, why did that happen? Was it a liability issue? Three, Mr. Mayor, why did the... Why uh, did it take so long? Why was there so... Why did there have to be so much discussion? Just okay. the way the... I guess, I guess you have a multiple users of the poll, so that all has to be coordinated, and I think what's happened is there was a user, one of the utilities that put their plant in the inappropriate location. Okay. So then you have to go through a, a process of actually getting it moved to make sure all the spacing's right. And it's, yeah, just that's how it sort of unfolded. And we, we being the last utility, the lights are the ones left to clean it all up. Well, thank you for the work on that. It's really pretty disgusting to hear. Are there comments or questions on this? A motion, please. A second, please. Councilor Maracas. Comments or questions, any further? All in favor then. Carried, that is, pardon, contrary, that is carried. <laughs> Appreciate that. We'll move to parks and recreation. Starting with item 11-66, and it goes through at 1189. Any other? I'm sorry? 1170. Councillor Thompson. <coughs> Others, please. In that case, may I have a motion to accept the other items? Councillor Maracas, thank you. Second. Councillor Humphreys, all in favor? Contrary? Carried. Thank you. Councillor. Councilor My apologies. Uh, I wanted 1189, the uh, wildlife park pulled as well on the next page. The wildlife park? All right. All the other items are okay then? All in favor? Contrary? Carried. Councilor Thompson. 1170 and then 1189. My question to 1170 really is just whether or not uh, it's still necessary for us to put the same amount of funding aside, uh, given the recent discussions and, and change in terms of how we're, we're treating the trees and stuff. So I just wanted to um, get a sense from, from the director that, you know, the conversation has been had and yes, we still need to, you know, put, a, put the same amount away each year to, to be able to address this issue or, or not. Mr. Downey. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, with regards to that, I asked the same question. Um, we presented a report to Council indicating that we were going to change uh, 
uh, from Trias and Imajad, and we also indicated that there'd be a cost savings associated with that. However, in that report, if you recall, we were going to report back to council with regards to the success of that program. Um, so we are uh, looking at uh, maintaining the funding that we have presently, and uh, if we find this, pro this program successful, we will then be modifying or reducing the uh, contribution each year. Great, yes, thank you. Any other comments or questions on this one? Just Mr. Downey, um, Notwithstanding your answer, there's, there's a number of other municipalities in York Region that have, have made the decision to just let the, the ash trees go the way of the emerald ash borer having its way with it. Do you have any comments on that? It, it, through, I know it's three, Mr. Mayor. It's, uh, it's the best amazing. I can say is uh, when we first came in with the project, that was one of the uh, yeah. one of the options presented to council, uh, and we gave um, detailed information with regards to that as far as the number of trees, the costs associated with that. Uh, as you know, there was a quite a healthy discussion with regards to the options, um, and so the option to treat with, uh, the trees was approved by council. Uh, council always has the option to um, to suspend that program, and uh, if that's the case, we'd be happy to report back to council and what the financial implications of that might be. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Downey. Motion, Councillor Thompson. A. Second, please, Councillor Maracas. Comments or questions? All in favor? Contrary. It's carried. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Thompson, last one. Thank you. With regards to the wildlife park? Yes. Um, uh, through you to Mr. Downey. Mr. Mr. Downey, has Council approved all the aspects of the wildlife park, or is that, I thought that was still part of uh, an ongoing discussion, and so I just wanted to get some clarity. Mr. Downey. Mr. Downey. Mr. Mayor. Excuse me. With regards to the wildlife park, um, council has approved um, the engagement of a consultant to go through te detailed design, which we are presently doing. Um, those uh, de that detailed design will then um, initiate uh, conversation with our stakeholders as well as uh, the conservation authority um, and uh, make any changes. The uh, the detailed design has not been presented to council, but only a, a, an overall master plan concept. As you know, you had a presentation by one of our consultants with regards to um, the hydrological study that we had, we had completed, indicating that there was sufficient water uh, in the uh, in the area to uh, realize the plan that has uh, that was presented by Mr. Tomlinson. Um, however, that plan comes with some challenges, uh, particularly from uh, the conservation authority's perspective with regards to uh, the maintenance and uh, construction of online ponds. Um, so we are going through some detailed drawings and studies with regards to that, providing that information uh, to the con to the conservation authority, which we have not done at this time. Uh, however, they are aware of our position with regards to the, uh, our requirement for online ponds. Um, and um, uh, with that approval, we would then move forward with construction of the wildlife park as, uh, as approved by those stakeholders. Councillor. Thank you very much. And, and that was sort of my recollection that we're going through this process because I, I certainly couldn't see anywhere that we've, we've identified what the total cost of the wildlife park is and so forth because we're still waiting for some of these. So I, I guess, Given that there is uh, still information and decisions to be made, um, through you to Mr. Downey, wouldn't it be more prudent if uh, this one had a, had a B associated with it, that it's, as a placeholder, it's conditional, but it still is pending those, those other reports and information to come back to us? Mr. Downey. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, <coughs> with regards to this particular project, um, uh, the quick answer to that is no. Um, the, um, the, the, uh, pond that we're discussing here is that there are two online ponds within that water, wildlife park presently existing and they are proposed to remain. We are not removing those ponds and we've got zero indication from the Conservation Authority that they are asking for that removal. Um, so in stating that, we need to make sure that we continue to have these funds, these ponds functioning properly and the dam structure uh, needs some work, particularly on the North Pond. Um, and uh, so as part of this, we are proposing we move forward with this, um, get this work completed. It will not, it will have no impact on whether we move forward or don't move forward with regards to, to the wildlife park. This work needs to get done. So you see it as independent of that? It's through you, Mr. Mayor, yes. They're not tied, it's not tied to the wildlife park other than the fact that it's in the wildlife park. Councilor Gardner. 
Thank you. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor and Mr. Downey. Just for clarification, Mr. Downey, so the, the uh, proposal that um, Mr. Tomlinson made, which was, looked like it was going to say the, save the taxpayers quite a lot of money, has nothing to do with this at all? Mr. Downey? Through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, no. Um, uh, Mr. Tomlinson's plan has indicated um, uh, the, um, the two ponds that were, or the northern pond, which we are referring to specifically here. Um, however, that's not a created pond. It's already existing. Uh, the Conservation Authority is aware of it. Um, they have provided no comment with regards to the removal of it. Um, so this work is uh, outside uh, of uh, any work that we would do uh, as a result of Mr. Tomlinson's uh, master plan. Thank you, Mr. Downey. Any other comments? Can I have a motion, please? Second. Councillor Abel, thank you. All in favour? Contrary? That is carried. Capital item 11 90. Accessibility Committee. Any I'll just move A. Pardon me? I'll move A. Thank you, Councillor Maracas. Second, please. Councillor Humphreys, any further comments or questions on this? Councillor Thompson, Councillor Gardner. Um, through you to, uh, I'm not sure who can answer it. Perhaps the clerk's department can answer it. Um, but, you know, it identifies as $100,000 to fix the audiovisual systems in the committee boardrooms, including hearing assist. Is that for all the boardrooms or are we just allocating it for one? Um, sort of where is that $100,000 going? Mr. Marr, can you help us with that? Or uh, Ms. Henriksen? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the $100,000 has been identified in the accessibility annual plan, um, and it is, I believe, for all the rooms associated that will be used by, by anybody who comes into those rooms. Um, I don't know if Mrs. Henriksen has more information about that. We've been leading a kind of a multi-departmental team with regards to that, so the clerk's office, IT, uh, facilities as well have been involved in those discussions um, and I know that Stephen has been involved with it directly so I don't know if Mrs. Hendrickson has anything to add on that so no. Yes, Thank you. And is it the recommendation of the the uh, accessibility committee that all of them be done? I, I, I'm just not sure if, if they all need to be done or do you just designate one specifically um, and so I don't know if somebody from the accessibility committee perhaps Councillor Gardner can speak to it. Councilor Thank Gartner. you. I'm not on that committee this time, but I would say that Ivy is the expert at the table. Um, Sandra may have some comments as well. Councillor Humphreys or Ivy? Ivy? Mr. Mayor, um, all of those items would be recommended and go through the Aurora Accessibility Committee. So some of them would be identified by the committee. Some of them would also be ident identified through the community consultation. So if a member of a committee, for example, has uh, met with the committee or gone to the accessibility advisor, these would be rolled out through the annual plan. That's my understanding from Chris. Councillor? Uh, Councillor Gartner, you had your hand up. I believe Councillor Humphreys was there first. Well, no, you had your hand up first. Thank you. Well, I, I just, um, you know, do, do these, are these things mandated by the AODA? or will they be mandated? I, I know there's a new rollout coming soon. Ivy? The town is following the um, AODA, uh, sorry for the lack of a better word, the rollout. Um, the town is now moving through the third regulation with the fourth regulation pending. So some of these are just trying to get ahead of when we will be required to have them. Uh, we already have some hearing assisted rooms including the Herb McKenzie room at the Senior Center. I believe both the committee rooms behind us at Council Chambers have been done. So these would be in addition to the existing ones as identified, which would be identified through the public consultation. Yes, sir. Thank you, and just as a follow-up, we, we know the population is aging, so these things will assist not only people with, in quotes, disabilities, but, but the general population as, as we age. We're now, I think, greater population than children under 14 not you okay 
Uh, and we're getting older, so, uh, and, and the population that's getting older is really large. So I'm, I'm just wondering whether or not I should be calling Councillor Maracas on a point of privilege here, you know, because he was pointing at me when you were saying, Councillor Gardner, we're getting older. <laughs> but it beats the alternative. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, was if there, the question in there, was that just a comment? Councillor Humphreys, I don't know if you have any comment around that with respect to the Accessibility Committee. Thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor, I, I believe that, you know, in terms of what um, Ivy mentioned earlier, it, it, you know, we need to follow a process and roll out, and there is a policy as, as this goes through that uh, it'll be before Council, whatever happens at the Accessibility Committee. Thank um, you. So it's prioritized by the, the, the committee, sorry. Councillor Abel. Thank you, and, and I'm just catching, I just want to be sure I understand this because this is from staff rather than through the committee because in all the committee reports that I've received, I don't recall any of these items being brought forward. So I just want to be sure that I understand that. Ivy, can I go back to you, please? Mr. Mayor, um, the committee is part of the annual plan. Our policy advisor is responsible to provide the town with an annual plan, and we're also we are also required to provide compliance documents. So some of these may fall under compliance, but they would all be captured under the annual plan, which is a public document, which the committee uh, provides information and is part of it. In fact, I believe the chair of the committee is the first page of the annual plan. We have a comprehensive annual plan, and we also have a multi-year plan. So these would all be uh, captured in one or the other. Councilor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I don't think that answered my question. However, um, uh, maybe I'll ask it in a different way. Will these projects be vetted through the uh, advisory committee and before it goes to council? I don't know if that's a procedure. Councilor Gardner? I've... This plan came to council. I don't remember what year it was. It was in our last council. It was an extensive plan uh, over many years. Uh, involved a lot of money, and I'm pretty sure that we approved it. I can't be sure of that, but that would, we could find that out. Um. All right, so really, we have a, an, an overall accessibility uh, plan that we're adopting and moving through under the AODA for accessibility compliance right. as the plan goes through. But I think what I wanted to, to sort of know is that the advisory committee may be bringing forward through committee, whether it's mm -hmm. a delegation or a citizen or mm -hmm. committee recommendations at committee, um, projects that require funding and they would recommend to council and then it would be approved. That was not the case here. This is something of a master sort of plan for lack of a better term that was vetted through, and this is part of the rollout, as we have it said. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, um, Councillor Abel, to my knowledge, the Accessibility Committee reviews the plan and receives it as part of the process, and they provide input to that plan before it gets recommended to <coughs> Council. So they would have inputted throughout uh, the multi-year planning. Councillor? Would they have done it uh, this term? Yes. Next term. Been so they, the, it's been ongoing since we've had a committee since 2003. So the committee of this term, which is a new committee, has approved and seen this? Would have seen it. They don't have an approval process. Would have reviewed and provided any comment, comments or input to the accessibility advisor. And that was brought forward in a review to council this term? If, if I believe so, I'm, I'm going to refer that to the clerk. I'll just, Madam clerk? Well, perhaps the chair, uh, Councillor Humphreys, would... Uh, through, through uh, Mr. Mayor, um, my understanding is I think I thought we had an overview of the of the plan at our first meeting, uh, but I could be wrong. I could be Madam wrong. Clerk? My understanding is that there's an I'll ongoing the, plan. I'll go to the clerk, please. Through you, Mr. Mayor, the uh, accessibility committee has been provided the document, and they will be reviewing it over the upcoming months, and then it will come back mm -hmm. to council. But at the moment, all of these items have been identified within that plan and have in previous commi uh, accessibility committee last term, they did review these items. So to answer my question, for this term's advisory committee, 
it is in the process of being reviewed. They have the documentation. They have not come forward with their comments or approval. I think, well, that's, they don't, I think that's my answer. They don't approve, they recommend. They make well, they, they haven't gone through that exercise. They've got the material, but nothing else has transpired as of yet in that advisory committee. I, although I think I think Councillor Gartner was trying to uh, they're trying to say that this is an ongoing process. This is well, not I also th I mean it's a it's a plan and um, it's like a lot of our plans. It's a I don't know if it's a five year plan, but there's a we have to review it every so often, um, and that doesn't mean the committee can't keep putting input or we can do input into it. But it is I'm pretty sure a plan that was approved by our last council. Um, so it's not exactly ongoing. It's ongoing for comment, but it did have. It, it, it wouldn't be up to this accessibility advisory committee to go back to that plan necessarily and say we don't like this or we don't like that, because uh, I think the plan is in place. But that has to be checked with the records. Councillor Abel, if, if you're not comfortable with this, perhaps it be. be it. Oh, I'm comfortable. Okay, all right. I, I have no problem. I, I, I think we could do more, in my mind. Uh, the only problem, the only concern I sort of want to make is that if there is funding available that the committee has identified and prioritized what they feel. So they may say, you know what, we, we, uh, we, we didn't really think Lambert Wilson Park was probably hot, but we want to see some funding done this way. And I don't want to see them hand struck because, well, we in 2003 rolled this out as part of a um, it's just my sort of understanding and I just think that the public should know and the information of this whole plan is online I'm going to assume so that I could go to that and review it and if I have other questions uh, I can bring them up at the appropriate committee or or to staff or or whatever um, I think it's great that we've got three hundred fifty thousand dollars that we're going to approve for funding um, it seemed to me that it was 50,000 a year. I don't know why I had that impression. This is capital. I mean, this is capital? It's 100,000 a year. And is the advisory committee also advanced 50,000 a year for the discretion? Ivy? These are specific uh, capital projects for the implementation of 2014 to 2021 priorities identified for the town. So keep in mind this is capital. And then you also have the committee usually recommends a budget of uh, 50,000 for the operations of accessibility initiatives. Uh, in 2003, I recall it used to be $100,000, but we've uh, kept it at $50,000 for the last few years since the AODA Thank as we integrate several projects. Thank you very much. I appreciate that clarification. It does clarify uh, some of my confusion. <coughs> and I think it's time for me to review and get caught up on this. Thank you, Councillor Abel. And you're moving A, is that correct? Yes, I'm going to move A. Councillor Gartner seconding that. Oh, I have um, one last question. Sure. Um, it's something that really annoys me. Why would the Accessibility Advisory Committee be responsible for putting an audio pedestrian signal at any intersection? That's $50,000. Why, why, thank you. I think. Through you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the audible pedestrian signal signals are a high cost item. When we develop new intersections, it's typically our practice now to have a disability lens on those intersections and we now put in the APS, but these would be retrofits or for areas that have been identified that were not, not identified through uh, Mr. Simonovskis' IES plan. So these typically are retrofits and those ones come forward from folks like the school board, um, I know the last two we've done that went to the committee were uh, for students with visual disabilities for specific intersections brought forward from the York Region District School Board. Councillor? Great, thank you. Councillor April? Thank you. And to that point, um, we have an intersection that we are doing that we approved, uh, Industrial Parkway in Wellington, item 1155. So those placements of the audio that you just spoke about will be in place at that intersection? Mr. That would come back that to That infrastructure Simonofsky. would be in place so that if we ever did want to put it in, we wouldn't be doing the expect, expensive retrofit. Mr. Simonovskis? That's true, yes, yes, because the new design standards require it now. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I apologize, Councillor Abel. Councillor Marakis and Humphrey moved and seconded the motion for A. All in favor?
<clears throat> Contrary, that is carried. Next item is under information technology. Item 1191 financial system upgrade, 1192 is the corporate related infrastructure. Would any Councillor, well, it's uh, someone who have a motion on the floor, or we just wish to talk about Councillor uh, Councillor, who are you? Councillor Thompson. For both of them? Okay. Second by Councillor Marakis. Comments or questions, please, for either of these two items? I'm sorry? Councillor Gartner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. On page 91. Um, why is it, is the $2,600,000, okay, I've just answered my own question. Contracts versus uh, consulting versus actually issuing the contract. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments? All in favor then? Contrary? That is carried. Do we wish to keep motoring? I don't know if lunch is. Okay, we can just keep motoring through. We've got four, four more items. Okay, the last ones are in uh, rates. rates. Comments or questions on these? Motion to adjourn, please. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Councillor Perry. So items uh, 11, 93, 94, 95, 97. Councillor Thompson. I'm sorry? Okay. Anything else? Councillor Abel. 1197. Please. Alrighty. Other two then? Well, let's just go, we'll just do those two right now. So 1194, Councillor Thompson. Just a quick question for you to Mr. Simonovskis. Mr. Simonovskis, each year we, we talk about the water replacement program and we've, we've supported it, but the basis of it is to help us reduce our water loss or, or get a bit more accurate picture of, of what's happening. Um, and I noticed that in the report you do identify the water loss for 2014. Are you going to be providing us with some sort of metrics and or report that really shows the, the, I guess, the effectiveness of the program in reducing our water loss? I mean, will that be coming up at our, our future budget? Because I think it's something that comes up year after year. We talk about water loss, but I I'm, I'm, haven't really seen any current metrics to show that all of the things that we're doing, including the relining and so forth, is having an impact on, you know, uh, reducing that water loss. Mr. Simonovskis. Uh, certainly through Mr. Mayor, we do an annual water report. The one for this year, I believe, came in April or May. And we do talk about water loss and we identify um, the program that we're following is the International Water Audit Methodology, which is something we talked about probably five years ago now. So specifically to water meter improvements, I mean, there's two aspects of the water meter program. It's definitely intended to reduce our water loss because as meters age, they generally fail in favor of the, uh, of the user. Uh, that's that's one objective but the second objective which is also very important is that our water meter inventory has for the most part reached its useful life so we do need to actually look at this change out more from a practical perspective that the meters are you know are at higher risk of failure I might ask too if, if, it, if it makes sense for 2016 for reporting on our 2015 actuals that uh, Mr. Elliott's staff provides some specific details on the areas that we've done some change outs to see if there's a, a shift in what's happened with regards to those areas. I think that'd be useful information. And I agree that, uh, you know, uh, from a physical perspective, there's a need to replace them, but I also think it's good to show that historical trend that, uh, you know, the, the dollars that we're investing are having a return in terms of, you know, mitigating some of those issues. And, and you know, while the water audit speaks to it, it's just nice to have it as a simplified graph or metric to showing year over year results. Thank you, Councillor. Other comments on this particular item? <coughs> Is there a motion? All right, let's go to 1197 then. Councillor Thompson, you, uh, I believe, wish to... Oh, Councillor Abel, you wish to discuss that? Well, Mr. Mayor, I was just 
I'm looking at the report, and I, I should have looked at it before I pulled it. Uh, my, uh, my first blush was is maybe we should do a study and see if we can repurpose the building. Um, <laughs> but I'm, I'm going to pass on this one. May I have a motion then to, uh, we have four items to uh, approve those. Is it A, Councillor Thompson? Councillor Peary, you're seconding? Thank you. Well, we want to get you in there. All in favor? Contrary? That is carried. Thank you. Councillor Peary must be hungry by now. Uh, just, bef just before we do move to adjourn, thank you very much. I don't know if we want to, uh, we'd recess over lunch, my suggestion. Uh, and thank you, Councillor Abel. Seconded. Councillor Maracas. Uh, may I request that we be back here ready to start by 1 o'clock, please? Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Contrary? It's carried. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Holy crap. Huh? I said, holy crap.